All right. Uh, you know, small problems in the in the world of in the world of trading. <laughs> I wish I thought of this earlier. Just hit the stop button. Do a part one, then do a part two, a part three, a part four, so that we can get this out to our Discord users. So, following this theory, right? Following a, a little bit of volatility and price action theory. Not smart to be a buyer up here. It was only a matter of time before this thing peeled off and went the other way, and it went hard and fast. This thing went hard and fast. So w w what is the expectation over? And we had a, that, you know, a nice divergence. So that's what we're shopping for, right? Uh, Larry Williams, professional buying. Give me something. Give me two to three data points to work with on a divergence on a, on a higher time frame. And I'm going to take that every day, especially up near, up near the 3.25 uh, overbought. And um, so a nice deviation, 3.25. I mean, those, those, those three things are going to put you in a better position <laughs> as a, a seller if you're going to short sell. I, I don't like to be a short seller in an uptrend. I really don't. I don't want to bet against the market. And I've got to get out of that mentality, right? This market is looking for sellers. During the entirety of this, uh, of this uptrend, right, the market is looking for sellers. It needs sellers. Don't be a seller. Be a buyer. Be a buyer until you've got a pretty darn good reason to be a seller on the short side. You're taking profits to sell all day, you know. If you want to buy, go long and and, and and hit your profit taking marks, you know, that's up to your discretion where you want to take this as a swing trader or as an intraday trader. So trending higher, trending higher. We even started to deviate back here when we trended higher. There was a lot of nonsense going on with this with the CPI. And I say nonsense and I mean, what I mean is story there was a lot of storytelling that was going on. Overbought, even on the 12 hour, nice deviation, 3.25. Oof, we're good. Tag the high with your anchor volume weighted average price and see if we're gonna get back over that because that would that would indicate to us that the market does want to trend, trend back higher. But uh, uh, breaking back into this 1.25 with significant force, when we do that, we've gotta come back down and meet this control price. When we do that, we've gotta at least come back down and meet this control price. Better buying opportunities exist much lower on the chart. Can this thing come down to the 1.25? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Would I be looking there to be a buyer? As a, as a swing trader, yes. So this established up channel, we just, we, it hasn't peeled back in a while. So this is just, uh, you know, call it some areas that need to be tested or whatever. I, f I feel like we've already tested this area. Um, does it have to test it? No, we don't have to test it. We don't have to do any of that shit. Uh, and this is why we're bringing in a little bit of uh, volume theory, too. Volume studies. I, I really haven't established any rules for volume. I am just trying to find out where all the big money is being spent. If, for instance, we get down to, to this 1.25 all over again in this established uptrend, you know, how, how low can this go? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a... a uh, Elliott Wave theorist, I couldn't tell you how far it's going to go down. I don't use Fibonacci. I really just don't give a shit. But we are, in a simple perspective, uh, oversold. We are oversold today. Uh, what the hell? When the heck did our, our, our... Did we... From the pivot, from this swing pivot low, that's the pivot that we were working with. Okay, so I mean... <laughs> Can we compress and consolidate near that volume weighted average price and get a nice divergence down here? Are we diverting now? I mean, on a 12-hour, no. So let's bust out the other, the other time frames. So this, th this is going to, so this should give us the information that we're looking for to be on the right side of the trade. So transferring that knowledge from larger time frames or all time frames to an intraday time frame. I think that this might, you know, keep you out of trouble and get us on the right side of the trade. So this did, over the last two sessions, things looked a little bit different, right? From, from, from this red line to this red line, things looked a little different than they did. So here's that five-day moving average moving down, right? We were, this was getting sticky in here, in this area. And the market started to indicate to us that things were looking a little bit different consolidation when well, they call it consolidation right is the market gaining a little bit more momentum to get 
to move back in the other direction. You know, the energy of the market. Here's that 1.25. And here's that compressed look. Call it compression. Call it consolidation. Call it whatever you want. It's market makers accumulating or distributing their positions. And since we've made a remarkable price correction, I'm of the mind that this is accumulation and not distribution. But can volume help with us on that too? Uh, so volume weighted average price for the day. And uh, this is the overnight session, right? And they got a little, you know, they got a little bit, uh, they couldn't break it back into the 1.25. They got a little ahead of themselves, right? As this trend just starts to, um, starts to consolidate. And we break back into a 1.25 standard deviation. And, and nicely, too. What was this at the, this is at the one hour mark. So this is the overnight session, but let's give these guys some credit. And this is really, you don't really see a lot of, when volatility starts to pick up, you do see the London session start to participate <laughs> a little bit. So we break back into this 1.25. It's still the same principle. We've got to go up and meet this. And it doesn't matter if this, compresses down and we meet the control price that too can happen but I, I feel like on the lower sessions this can get a little wild pretty quick around uh, the, the, the volume weighted average price as a control so we go up we meet this uh, we get a quick rejection around, around that volume weighted average price but then they soon push it a little higher so now we've, re we've gained control of the control price buyers have gained control of the control price. Oh, I've got the windows open and there's all kinds of bugs in here. Anyways, uh, what, so from 1.25 to 1.25, can we break out of that? No, that looked pretty stiff. And most of the data is contained within our 1.25 deviations from that volume weighted average price. So was it a, was it a better idea to be a seller up in here? And we don't have our deviations working on the lower time frames. Um, but this is the theory, right? So now we're getting, here's that five-day moving average, moving down. Something that we like to pay attention to. But then this is the volatility that started to pick up during the day. Oh, boy, I tell you. So we did not break. When we did not break to the downside, this was, in the previous session, a pre th this, was, this was a clue that something was going on that this market might start to slow down on the selling. Maybe sellers are getting exhausted. We cannot break, we can't break, during the session we could not break below this. So the market did want to trend higher here. So from 1.25 to 1.25, strong rejection, very strong rejection. From 1.25 to 1.25, almost instantly, and then back again. But this is the heavy hitters that come in in the U.S. markets, the market makers, you know, the top 10 institutions that are pushing, who've got more money than <laughs> anybody on the planet, who are pushing this price action right now. And and you better believe that you better respect it. So they're ou outside of this 1.25. Does it mean that they can't? It depends on what this market wants to do and what they want to do with their money. They're, they, they're not in the business of losing. So, uh, But we can get some... Uh, indication of what the hell is going on, right? Even on the lower time frames. So we break back into the 1.25. We've got to come down and meet this control price, right? The volume weighted average price. And we are undecided. We are, are we are ripping through uh, the control price. And we did get a nice reaction from this, but strong sellers still in the market. Couldn't begin to tell you what was going on from, from one side to the next. Um, so, y y you know, who is going to gain control of this market, sellers or buyers? And <coughs> why? Oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> it couldn't be. Money? Profits? Something along those lines? Five-day moving average uh, looked like it was helping us a little bit here inside the, 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 the 1.25 area. Um, and this became, this became a, a, a place of con consolidation, right? We're, we're compression. We're compressing. Energy is being restored to the market for a market move. And, and who's accumulating positions here? So let's take another look 
at the session just before this. And why this looks so much different? Oh uh, yeah, we've got to rescale. That's how um, that's how wild it was. And I think we've only got five sessions in here, but okay. Just from session open to session open, clearly this looked a hell of a lot different. Price action could not even even at the six o'clock could not seven thirty. Heavy hitters come in, 7.30, uh, 7.30 Mountain Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. Heavy, heavy hitters came in. We are not even, we are just not even getting up to that volume rate average price. We are just pushing the lower bounds of that 1.25 all day long. And this is, this is a continuation of the activity that was happening the, the session before, is that we were not, we could not challenge. Price action could not challenge the volume weighted average price here. And let's get another video in here before I run out of time. 